Hey fellow heisters, it's Jason Walsh, the developer for Small Time Crooks, and today I'm going to walk you through the first phase of the game called Casing the Joint. Now when you want to play this as a GM-less cooperative RPG, first thing you're going to do is pick a target. So for instance, today I am showing you the London HQ, and our score is a decryption key. Now, the next thing we want to notice here is that the difficulty is hard. This is a tough one, but that's okay. We're ready for it. Once we've selected our target, we're going to flip it over and we can see a setup diagram on the back. Some cards are numbered, like our entry and where our score is. We can tell because it has a circle around it. And some are not. In this case, we have just random door symbols here. Those are room cards. And those are just shuffled and randomly placed face down. Anytime we put a room card on a target, we are also going to shuffle and randomly place an obstacle below it. And to wrap up the heist, or target setup, what we're going to do is put an arrow card, or discovery card as they're called, in between each one exactly as they're laid out on this card. So now you can see I've got random discovery cards, I've got random rooms, and I've got random obstacles. I've already selected my thief today. I'm gonna to play as the old timer, and I already know where the score is in the innovation lab. But other than that, I don't really have any other intelligence. And in our first phase, casing the job, that's where I'm going to find this out. So, functionally, what this does is this phase allows you to roll a die and start turning over these face-over room and obstacle cards. I'll tell you right now, strategically, the thing that matters most is getting obstacle cards turned over. The more you turn over, the more you can better understand how to stage the player order when you actually move through the heist itself. So, when I want to turn something over, if I'm casing anything on the board, what I'm going to do is first point it out to my friends and say, this is the obstacle I'm casing. Then, I'm going to take my six-sided die and pick one of my four skills on the list. Force, which is this first one here in red, is not just uh, fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat and guns. It's also use of non-computerized tech, and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to use that in conjunction with the old-timer's ability I've been around. Also, you'll notice that I get to tie this into the old-timer's third ability, where he gets plus one to all non-violent checks using a trusty old tool. So I'm going to say that I go outside of this London HQ and I use an old timey 80s stereo speaker to try to listen through the wall, old spy style, and see if I can't figure out what's in that room. I'm going to take this six sided dice. I'm going to roll it. Nice. I rolled a five. What I have to hit is a target number of three on the very first case. And every attempt subsequently goes up by one. So. As you can imagine, if you're a math wizard or somebody with an eighth grade education, I already had a plus three from his native checks. He gets a plus one here, he gets a plus one here, and then he gets a plus one here. So there's basically no way I could fail this. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Ooh, a robo dog is there. That is not great for, for my guy, but uh, not the worst either. Okay, now I want to check this one out, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll again. I'm going to say this time that I used um, I used an old set of binoculars and I'm standing across the street on a rooftop. That's how I cased this. Obviously knocked it out of the park. I got a six here. I'm going to just move on to the next one. We're rolling like crazy. Another five. I don't even have to do the math, but if I was going to, first attempt was three, second attempt was four. Now I have to get a five or better. It just so happens I natively got it, but I'm still using this chain here of all three. This time around, I would say that I've done an old school phone hack. Uh, I went to a, a junction box outside because these office buildings still have a lot of latent, latent phone networks. And I got in and I, um, if you ever seen The Dark Knight, I did like old timey sonar in the room. Uh, and that helped me figure out ooh, that I have to steal a key card in there. So you're going to continue to do this. And as you continue to go, uh, this number is going to ratchet higher and higher. If I went again, its next one will be six and then seven and then so on. At some point, any point you want, 
you can be done and say, you know what, it's over, we're cutting it off, let's move into the heist itself. If you're playing this with multiple people, you've obviously just seen me spam the old timer, but let's say I also had the wheel man on staff too, you always wanna make sure our golden rule in this game is don't have the same player go twice. So in a two player game, it would go the old timer, then the wheel man, then the old timer, and you'd keep chaining back and forth. That rule persists into the second phase of the heist as well. If you got any questions or you wanna know more, go ahead and like and subscribe and check out our other social channels. Small Time Crooks will be coming out this year in August on Kickstarter. Thanks so much.